this. Let's go! Last weekend, I decided to take on my first kernel exploit, focusing on the well-known Dirty Cow vulnerability. I've read about it many times in the past, but never really took the opportunity to understand how the bug works or the mechanics behind it. So I spent the last weekend trying to figure it out, and in this video, I will share some of my insights working on it. To start off my research, I had to wear my DevOps hat and figure out two important stuff. The first one is how to compile the kernel, and the second one is how to set up the IDE for easier code navigation. Uh, so to tackle the first issue, in order to compile the kernel, I used menu config, and uh, to set up the IDE, I used uh, clang D and compile DB to generate a compilation database file. After I got all that set up, I began by doing some research and came across a detailed blog post that broke down the dirty cow bug from the kernel's perspective. It was packed with technical information such as stack traces and function names that helped me to understand where to focus in the Linux kernel codebase. However, as I dug deeper into the kernel's source code, I started to feel a little bit overwhelmed and lost, so I decided to pivot and change my approach. Instead of trying to absorb all the technical details up front, I thought, why not just jump in and see what happens? I wrote a simple C program using Madvice and MMAP to observe their behavior, and I just thought to myself, you know, let's see what happens. Uh, I mean, I should have done that in the beginning. All right, today we're going to talk about how we can find out and how much we can find out and what it takes to get there. So first we have to decide how much do we want to find out. So let's say in this case, I want to find out at a level of seven. Okay, so I find that level on my graph and I come horizontally to my gradient line. Where it intersects with my gradient line, I'm going to come straight down to where it intersects with my fuck around line. That there is gonna tell me how much I have to fuck around to find out what I need to find out. See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. So I hope this lesson is helpful. I made a simple program that explores how MMAP Madvice and Proxelfmem interact together. This isn't an exploit, this is just a way to understand the moving parts. We start by opening a file, uh, which contains the text test file. We map it into memory with mmap using map private, meaning that any changes we make should stay in our process memory and not affect the actual underlying file on the disk. Next, we open proxelfmem, which lets us access and modify our process memory directly. We first read from the memory mapped file to confirm that it says test file, and then we write abc directly into the mapped memory. Even though the file is read only, we can modify it in our process memory. In fact, this is the exact moment that copy on write is triggered. After the write, uh, we see the content in the memory has changed to test file but with ABC instead of the first three letters. And then finally, we call madvice with the madv don't need flag, which tell the kernel to discard our changes and remap the memory to the original file contents. Hmm. Okay. I think I understand what's going on. We have three operations. Trigger. 
Let's see the map here. So those two operations are not, they're not atomic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 